Hi everyone. Well, we're back. Um, we apparently had some technical difficulties last Friday. We were so thankful for those of you who stuck around and tried to hang in there, uh, but the video was just a hot mess, so we went and we'll start over. <laughs> so we promised you a recap. So here's the recap. We had an anniversary. It was super cool. Right, Jim? It was. This is Mr. Burnley, my husband, James Burnley. Uh, and it was great. We got treated to dinner by friends yep. and all that stuff. And we also had a very nice drink, an 18th century drink, uh, called Switchel, which some of you may have heard of. It is basically 18th century Gatorade. And we don't have it today, and I wish I did because I'm hot. Are you hot? Yep. Yeah. Nice to have it again today. It's like, it's Virginia. It's like 150% humidity and yuck. So anyway, we're taking a very warm liquid bath right now inside our silk. <laughs> but we are so glad to be here. We promised you some recaps. So the recaps are pretty exciting. We have two new patterns coming out this week. One is coming out tomorrow, hopefully. And that is my pattern, a sultana, which was made for me by my lovely team as an anniversary gift. And the other pattern coming out at the end of the week is Mr. Burnley's pattern, yes. which is a beautiful banyan. And for those of you, you know we already have our female and our male uh, wrapping gowns out right now. And... I know there's been a lot of questions and misunderstandings over the years when it comes to banyans and wrappers, but the, the contemporary research at this point in time points to wrappers being what we have produced, which is a loose-fitting T-shaped garment, which was called an India gown in England, and uh, Susan North has written an excellent article on that. The other garment, really speaking to a banyan, is something that is more fitted. It has a set-in sleeve, and it has more of a silhouette. So with that, let's show off your new banyan, Mr. Vernley. Okay. So the front of the banyan, yeah. it's got this beautiful fall away. And you'll notice it's tied. I know you've seen banyans in collections that have been uh, buttoned, etc. But these, this was also very common to tie it um, <clears throat> and spin around for I us. I see the back. Yes, and the back is just amazing. I have to say it was a moment when I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to, to recap uh, our our little wedding story, Jim and I met in 18th century clothes. So I've always kind of had a soft spot for those 18th century clothes and my husband in them. So <laughs> um, the banyan is something that is fitted, um, but is worn and undressed just like a wrapper is. However, some of the history going back, the banyan for a man was something he could still wear out in public. And you do see portraits, et cetera, of banyans being worn in coffee houses, uh, conducting business in the work, and wrappers as well. Whereas the sultana, which I'm wearing, it appears as a Turkish garment at the beginning of the century. It's adopted uh, by the Western culture, and it, it takes the name on of sultana, and sultana originally means harem and these women are wearing this distinctive garment it's adopted retains some of the same aesthetics and becomes an undress for women now this is an uh, a undress which stays in the house this is not something that is worn with company or out in public because women have other choices they have bed gowns they have jackets they have assorted garments that they can wear as more what we would call casual wear um, in public settings, but the sultana is something that they wear indoors. Um, and likewise, I don't think I've ever seen a wrapper out in public. Have you, Christina? Um, there are a couple of advertisements of individuals who self-liberate, who okay. are wearing either wrappers. wearing a wrapper uh, or at least have one with them. One I okay. think for sure is wearing the wrapper. Um, and that's to date. So if it changes, we want to know about it. And also the Sultana, as far as we know, 
there's not one in a collection. Now, the major collections, as far as we know, don't own one. There may be a small collection out there or a private collection out there. So if you guys know anything, we would love to know. Um, all of the details of this are based on all the information that we've gotten through uh, portraiture and written description, et cetera, uh, contemporary descriptions. And this one is unlined. And as far as we know, they are unlined, maybe. We have a couple of portraits that we use as examples where you can see that they are, um, fix myself, that they are um, trimmed out in, in uh, fur, but we can't tell that that's just not fur trimming or fur facing. Uh, were there any questions about the banyan? Um, I think one of the questions that people had had to do with fabric for banyans, actually. Well, banyans could be made out of a variety of fabrics. And what we're lucky about with banyans is that they happen in a lot of, uh, there are a lot of extants that occur in museums and in private collections. And they're made out of all different types of fabric. You see printed cotton unlined banyans. You see uh, tartan banyans, wool tartan banyans. Um, and here's, you know, just a, a little visual. So a printed, which could be a nice summer uh, banyan, a beautiful silk, just a real simple silk, um, ant lined or unlined could be a banyan. This is a linen, a striped linen. You see linen banyans. Uh, and another, a checked banyan, and a, another striped banyan. And then finally, uh, something like a tartan or a plain wool worsted. So a variety of fabrics. Uh, it's really your choice or your station or both. Um, so almost anything will go. And with the sultanas, um, again, we have portraitures, so the majority of them tend to be silk. Um, but... I'm sure there's some descriptions that I think deviate from that. So a printed cotton sultana. In the portraiture, they definitely appear to be largely kind of silk satins or taffetas, mm -hmm. kind of solid silks, but there are some that look like they're figured or damasks. Okay. Uh, and then there is one textual reference that discusses a striped sultana gown. Okay. But it doesn't say what fabric it is. Yeah. We have those on our Pinterest board for the pattern. Though. Well, that's right, we do. And the patterns are amazing. Um, they have so many links uh, within your directions. If you've ever experienced one of our, our uh, downloadable patterns um, that is a complete pattern, not one of our sew along patterns, and even the sew alongs have a bunch of links, but you will find that they are well linked to all of the stitches to information, to our Pinterest board, et cetera, et cetera. So there is tons of information. They are full color. They're beautiful. And, uh, you know, Christina will put up a little example of that right now so you can see that. So, folks, we're excited about these. You know, it's an important part for us to bring this sort of education to you, not only in our hands-on workshops and our online workshops, but now in pattern development of things that aren't out there or things that do need to be updated that have not been addressed for a very long time. Uh, and we're looking to fill those voids. So we hope you enjoy them. Mr. Burnley, I've taken enough of your time. Okay. I know you have other things to I attend to. I have other to. things to attend to, for sure. All right. Well, thank you so much. And just one last clap for Mr. Burnley, okay. who looks so adorable.